Okay, take a look at this last problem. Now, some people think that this sort of thing is too hard. I really don't. Um, it's a critical thinking problem more than anything. You can't really apply some simple little formula. Um, you have to think about what this problem is asking you to do and what's going on with your patient. So let's just look at it a minute. It says, by hospital policy, potassium from all IV sources cannot exceed a rate of 10 milliequivalents per hour. And that is a basic policy for patients who are on non-telemetry floors. I will tell you that if the patient is on a telemetry floor, you've got some latitude and it can be um, more than 10. But for the purposes of the math and for the purposes of the thinking, let's just say that you can't exceed a rate of 10 milliequivalents per hour from all sources of potassium. So if the patient has fluids running at 125 mils an hour, <coughs> excuse me, it's a liter bag, it has 40 of potassium in it, their potassium level's still low and you get an order to infuse a potassium rider. So this 60 milliequivalents in 150 normal saline is a potassium rider. So it's going to infuse until it's done. It's not a continuous infusion. But you have to determine how fast you can run it. What the patient has running continuously is a liter bag with 40 of K, and it's going at 125 an hour. When that liter bag infuses, we hang another liter bag that has 40 of K in it, and we set the pump to run it at 125 an hour. There's lots of ways to approach this. I want you to think about this patient. Here's their liter bag. Okay. This liter bag, so it's one liter, thousand milliliters, and it has 40 of K in it, 40 milliequivalents of potassium, and it's going at 125 an hour. So I approach this different ways depending on how I happen to be thinking at the moment. But one of the things I need to understand is how much potassium is the patient getting every hour already? So this liter bag going at 125 an hour is giving me how much potassium each hour? Well, the bag is a liter bag. It would take eight hours for that bag to infuse, right? So in eight hours, this bag is empty and the patient has received 40 of potassium. So if the patient gets 40 of potassium in eight hours, How much are they getting every hour? They're getting five MEQs of K. You can look at it this way. You can say there's my liter bag at 125 an hour 125, 125, 125, 125, 125, 125, 125, 125. Every hour, this much goes in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I add those 125s up, that's one liter. One liter, thousand milliliters, right? So, I have to put this 40 of potassium evenly in that whole bag. I mean, honestly, the potassium doesn't settle at the bottom. They don't get it first. It doesn't float to the top. They don't get it last. They get it evenly distributed among all those hours. There's eight hours. So there's five of potassium because five times eight is 40. So every time the patient gets 125 of potassium, I'm sorry, didn't say that right. Every time the patient gets 125 of fluid, 
they're getting five of potassium to go with it. So every hour, the patient gets five of potassium in the IV that's already hanging. So just stop and picture that. Without this additional order, don't even think about that for a minute, if I said to you, the patient has a liter bag of saline with 40 of potassium infusing at 125 an hour, how much potassium are they getting every hour? It would be five every hour. How do you apply the math to that? Well, I mean, you can do it a couple different ways. I suppose you could take, you know, a thousand and divide it into 40 to find out how many, how much potassium is in every mill and then multiply that by 125 mils. That would work. Or you can look at the total bag and say, this bag will infuse in eight hours. So this will infuse in eight hours. So it's five every hour. What if the rate was, let me change the rate to 100, just for thinking purposes. Well, then the bag infuses in 10 hours. So in 10 hours, they get 40. So they're getting four every hour, right? You could also say, like I, I mentioned, you could say, well, 40 divided by a thousand, you know, if there's 40 in a thousand, 40 divided by a thousand, there is 0 0.04 per mil, and however, mils, however many mils a patient is getting in an hour is how much potassium then they're getting. So, so if they're getting 125 an hour times 125, sure enough, that's five. If they're getting 100 an hour, so then it's 0 0.04 times 100 is four. Um, let's say it's going at 75 an hour. 75 an hour, 0 0.04 times 75, they're getting three milliequivalents of potassium every hour. Um, you know, or you could say, well, 75, a liter bag at 75 an hour lasts 13.33 hours. So if there's 40 potassium in the whole bag, then 40 divided by 13.33 is 3. So you come up with the same answer. It's just how is it you want to think about it. So you can do it either way. The bottom line here is the patient in this problem is already getting five milliequivalents of potassium an hour before you walk in the room with that piggyback. By hospital policy, you cannot exceed a rate of 10 milliequivalents an hour. You already got five going. You can't go higher than 10. So your desired becomes five milliequivalents per hour. Okay, and five is because you already, 10 is, 10 is the max, and you've already got five going. That's why what's desired is five milliequivalents an hour. Notice, this is a perfect example of why I like to look, use the word desired rather than ordered. Because what's ordered is 60 milliequivalents of potassium in 150 mils. And you may not have a rate ordered, or the physician may say, um, you know, run it in at 10 milliequivalents an hour. But you know that by policy, you can't do it that fast. And the physician, when he wrote that order, may not have been thinking of the fact that the patient already had potassium going. Certainly, you can call him and, you know, make him, but he's going to go, why didn't you just figure that out? He may not say it, but he'll certainly think it. So, 5 milliequivalents per hour, and what you have is 60 milliequivalents in 150 mils. All right? So, here's my desired, here's my half, and I'm going to save space, and I'm going to flip this, say 150 mils, 60 milliequivalents on the bottom. And look, this isn't even hard. The milliequivalents cancel out. You have mils per hour. Five times 
I don't know if you can see this, 150 divided by 60 is 12.5 mils per hour. Okay? So, 60 milli equivalents in 150 mils can run at 12.5 mils an hour. That combined with the continuous infusion at 125 an hour will give the patient a total of 10 milli equivalents per hour. Now how long will this this little rider last? Well if you're running it at 12.5 mils an hour and you have a 150 mil bag, the answer is 12, okay, but I'll show you and, and the reason I looked at that very quickly and could tell is because I know I'm running at 5 milli equivalents an hour. So at my 5 milli equivalents an hour, 60 milli equivalents should take 12 hours. So how do I know that's right? Well, let's take 150. This is a double check. 150 and divide it by the 12.5. Sure enough, 12 hours. I can't necessarily, 12.5 is what I came up with. That's what I'm going to set the pump at. And you know, my mental math is not so great that I can do 12.5 divided by 150 in my, in my head. But I can know by holding this little, hand, this little piggyback in my hand, it's got 60 milliequivalents in it, I have to run it at um, a rate that will let 5 go in every hour. Well, I know that it, this piggyback needs to take 12 hours because I, in my head, can take 5 and divide it into 60. And I can know that if this little piggyback has 60 in it, and I want to give 5 every hour, this little thing has to take 12 hours to run in. So 12 hours divided into 150 is 12.5. And that's just a double check. That's just when you look at your answer and say, does this make sense? So um, that's all I have for you. There is a um, paper on the blackboard that is called, let me see if I can find it, Math Post-Test. And there are seven problems on that Math Post-Test, including a even more complicated um, potassium problem that's kind of fun. Uh, when you're looking at that more complicated potassium problem, it tells you that a patient has a 24-hour bag that has TPN and potassium in it. Well, if it's a 24-hour bag, it doesn't matter what the volume is. So don't let that throw you. Whatever amount of potassium is in the 24-hour bag, they're going to get 1 24th of that every hour. So if you've got 48 milli equivalents of potassium in a 24-hour bag, that's 2 milli equivalents every hour. Okay, so you handle the 24-hour bag a little bit different because it doesn't matter what the volume is. It's a 24-hour bag. The patient's supposed to get the whole bag in 24 hours, so they'll get that whole amount of potassium in 24 hours. So hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, you should be able to go back um, to the various videos to review any particular problem that you're having. Um, otherwise, come see us. Bye-bye.